we're back on Riders of the Dawn. This is Del. This is Jay. What are we going to talk about today? So, how long should stuff be? Yeah. <laughs> how, long how long should stuff be, and why is that important? Yeah. How long should your book be? How long should your story be? How long should your script be? How long? <laughs> yeah. How long should your chapters be? Yeah. How long should stuff be, and why does that matter? Um, I remember I I actually had it, had this very specific question um, years ago. I went to a, a writers convention in Tucson called Tuscon, um, where Jim Butcher was on a panel, and this was before I had done really anything. Um, I just I I loved I loved fantasy and I, I liked the idea of this this nebulous idea of being a novelist and so I, w- I wanted to go to this um, and I had this exact question uh, because and especially for Jim Butcher who ha- who writes these serial books um, where <clears throat> you have a character doing things over the course of many books you know how do you decide when a book ends um, now I, I asked him this question and he had a, he had kind of a hard time answering because, and I, and in retrospect, I see it because the reason I had the question was because I hadn't done a lot of writing yet because as soon as I started doing writing, I'll suddenly like it made sense to me. Um, and one thing he said was, well, it, it, it ends when it ends, it, you know, you see where you see where the story ends and then you just stop. It's kind of weird. The, the conflict resolves, and thus the story ends. Yeah. So if, if, I, if I'm being more specific, and we haven't talked tremendously about pacing, but we're going to get into it right now. Um, your book will end when the tension resolves. So this means that you have to have something planned out. You have to know that there's this big conflict that happens, and you have to have some kind of resolution to that conf- conflict. Uh, now, in the <clears throat> in the case of of something more episodic, like Star Trek, <laughs> we have uh, conflict ends in a single episode. Yeah, the, the conflict ends at, the, at a at a single episode. But you understand that there's more story to be explored. Yeah, there's more uh, characters, and really, uh, you know, the the separation here. It's like why are why did why do they make sequels to things? Like why is there so many sequels and it's because people like the characters that they saw from the first whatever. Right. And so a series, and, and I really like Star Trek as an example. Star Trek is, is episodic. Classic Star Trek is episodic. Um, it's not what you see now that's popular, which is just an ongoing, never-ending storyline of stuff that eventually resolves, right? right. Um, so Star Trek's Soap episodic. esque Yeah. <laughs> So Star Trek's episodic, which means you, have, you introduce a conflict probably in, like, the pre-roll for the credits, you know? Yeah. And then you resolve that conflict at the end, and Picard, you, you know, Picard and, and whoever generate some, some wise statements at the end, and then the rest is for next week. Yeah. With these, with these longer ones that are popular now, like, you know, I don't know, uh, Walking Dead or Game of Thrones. Uh, Game of Thrones I remember reading the first book years ago and I was like I was like oh what'd you think I was like I don't know it's kind of like fantasy soap opera because I just it, I didn't feel like it had like a strong story yeah. personally and and um, you know it's not that it was badly written it just wasn't really for me um, probably same thing with the, the series the series didn't really interest me I know people are going to listen to that and think I'm crazy that I didn't find Game of Thrones very interesting but I just didn't. It's 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 not 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 everything's for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with that, you have, um, but you still with Game of Thrones, you will have a um, you'll have a plot point that ends every single episode. Something will happen. There'll be a cliffhanger. Some new crazy conflict is usually introduced to begin the next episode. So they have this format where like you you sort of tie things up, but you really introduce the next set of conflicts at the end of each episode. To keep the ball rolling along like a soap opera. To make sure that people turn in, tune in next yeah. time. And you pace it so that that happens at the end of that one hour or however long it's going to be. And I think the length of Game of Thrones episodes actually varies a little bit. You know, it's between, you know, 
50 and 60 minutes long. Uh, just like how Star Trek, they vary actually a little bit, even in a one hour broadcast TV, they're between 40 and 45 minutes, depending on what's there. And, and uh, yeah. So, the, the pacing part of it is, is uh, important so that you can arrive at your conclusion in, in, the, in the proper time. And so we can, we can extrapolate from this what should happen in your chapters because you need to think of, of your chapter breaks as individual tension tension points. Yeah. So, tension or tension release points. Whatever. Right. Because you, you might <clears throat> usually you want to get to the end of a chapter on a tension point so that you want to flip the page to the next to see the resolution. Yeah, you kind of... Yeah, you, so you want each chapter to be like a complete set of ideas. And just like when you're writing music, when you're not done, you want to, at the end of a phrase, kind of bring people into the next phrase by by having the next theme pick up from it or something like that. So, you know, you might end a chapter. So I ended a chapter with Walk at Dusk, um, which I'm putting out some samples and stuff on my website. You guys can read the first, I don't know, eight chapters, I think. Um, you know, the, the chapter ends with... Um, you know, he's down exploring this tunnel and then he hears people coming, right? That's the end of the chapter. Yeah. So it's like, okay, we got to the arrival point that we set up at the beginning of the chapter and I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger to make you want to flip over to the next chapter. Right. Even though you're just, you're holding a book and you don't have to do that. Yeah. It really just kind of makes people want to keep reading and still have kind of a break point. And yeah. Something else I do is I'll, I'll, I'll have a collection of chapters that, that composes what I call an act of a book and so at the end of that act all the conflict of that act is almost totally resolved the main conflict isn't but the most of the conflicts in the act are so when you close the book you feel like there's a satisfying ending and I feel that that can be pretty important if you're going to write um, a full length novel or longer than full length novel yeah um, you see this you see this a lot <clears throat> uh, a really a, a way that other authors use this chapter break kind of tension suspension is if you have, if you have multiple viewpoint characters <clears throat> and you need say you're ending on a, on a tense note in your chapter with, with one set of characters, the next chapter is about a different set of characters <laughs> to, keep that, to keep that tension rolling um, Yeah, to keep the reader feeling like they can't put the book down yeah, so you got to get through this set of tension, and then maybe the next chapter will be about that original set of tension that you wanted to get through. Um, I know in Wheel of Time, there's you get to a you get to a tension point with one group of characters, and you wouldn't see the release of that tension until the next book. Yeah, but that was really frustrating. <laughs> yeah, that was frustrating. Uh, I mean, and that's that's one of the things is like it, it's a combination of like, all right, you're not you you set up tension, and then he just won't resolve it forever. And you're like, oh, well, you know, I really want the reader to feel the tension. It's like, yeah, but you're filling the space in between with, without any kind of tension resolution yeah. series. It's just like, a, you know, like I made a joke in the last podcast that the, the first three chapters of one of the books is just Perrin looking at the army. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like he's observing the army after a battle in the previous book. It's like, can we, is there anything else that we can do that might be interesting? Um, or like have some tension? And, and that's the contrast with like the first four four books or so that just have like non-stop stuff happening yeah. tension resolution just a cycle of it happening really non-stop and interesting things and you want, I want to know more about that but you don't learn more about that because there's Trollocs attacking and, yeah uh, so anyway I, I, one of the things uh, I think we might want to talk about is what what is the proper length for these things so we talked about like the, the nebulous term the nebulous terms of like, you know, it should be a plot point. How long should a chapter really be? Well, I mean, if you're Stephen King, sometimes it's one sentence. <laughs> uh, if you're if you're uh, Stephen Erickson, you know, it's fifty thousand words. <laughs> it could be. So, actually, I, I I figured out Stephen Erickson's chapters are ten thousand words. Are they ten thousand? Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's chapters are about ten thousand words. Right. They're between 8,000 and like 12,000, but they're about 10,000 words. Um, and that's 
for, for Tolkien's writing style, each of those chapters completes a particular geographic area and a small part of the adventure. Yeah. Um, so if you look at The Hobbit, for example, each chapter is a little different area that they're having an adventure in. And if you look at Lord of the Rings, each chapter is a different location for the most part that they're visiting and experiencing and moving on from. So you have a chapter that's like, you know, they're in Moria, there's a chapter. They're running out of Moria, there's another chapter, right? Uh, they're um, they're running away t- to Lothlorien. There's a chapter. They're in Lothlorien. There's a chapter. They're talking to Galadriel and then leaving. There's a chapter. Uh, you know, so each one of those is like a little piece of that story that's moving them geographically forward, yeah. away from one thing into another thing. No, I uh, think so. That works for for his style books. I think in most of the modern style, I mean, like and, and Robert thousands. Robert Jordan's. Uh, chapters of five thousand. Yeah, I was gonna say that it's, it's more, the more modern style. The chapters, chapters are gonna be a lot shorter because we have a lot of. Uh, there's more. There's more detail. Like, or it's not that there's more detail. It's just the detail is attributed to different factors. So their pacing is is a lot different. Um, when you're reading, when you're reading Tolkien, the pacing has has to do with. With events in a in a geographic location, yeah. right? Whereas if you're reading um, uh, Wheel of Time, you you're going to have multiple chapters in the same location because of the the different the different plot points. Those plot points are going to be more centered around what's happening with the characters. Yes. Uh, Versus what's happening with. With, the with, overall plot. Yeah, with like the adventure moving forward. Um, and I think part of this has to do with, like like Stu said in the beginning, uh, people are really interested in characters today, which is why we have so many sequels. People just want to see the characters that they like. So stories are very character-driven, um, and those conf- the conflicts are built around specific characters as opposed to more... Like moral conflicts, yeah, which is more typical of older styles, yeah, uh, fantasy in particular. Uh, so you're going to see pacing um, appear differently based on what you're doing, based on what your what your story is doing. And I would say that in my in my style, five thousand words, maybe even four thousand words, is is about what a, a chapter for me looks like. And and part of that is because I know as a reader. That's about as much as I can handle. Kind of one I, sitting. Yeah, in one sitting before I start to get fatigued. So that's just how I've developed my writing style. Uh, and you may notice that with yourself, based on your reading habits, how your writing habits yeah, uh, this, materialize. This is another thing about chapters um, that I think people often overlook. Chapters, uh, chapters are there to give the reader uh, an understanding of the organization of your work. But also to make the reader feel momentum. Right. And one thing that was suggested to me by a YouTube subscriber a long time ago that actually makes a lot of sense when I think about it is naming the chapters. Right? So this is like, this is chapter five. This thing, you know, so Tolkien named all of his chapters. Jordan names most of his chapters, I think. Um, And... uh, what does that do? Well, that gives the reader a, a set of expectations for what's going to happen in that chapter. Yeah. And uh, keeps them interested and also makes them feel like there's story momentum and they're, they're progressing through it. And that they're they're really, uh, you know, they're, they're, yes, another chapter. Oh, this one looks exciting. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying this book. And, and I, I, I hope I hope this resolves before the end of the book. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of a psychological thing when you put chapters in. I'm sure there's people that are like, I'm going to write a book with no chapters. It's like, well, I don't recommend it. Yeah, you're going to get people putting your book down. Even if <laughs> yeah, the story's and, great. Yeah, even just... if you just every 5,000 words, you just drop a chapter heading. People yeah. are going to feel better about that. Because yeah. remember, you're not... I, people have this idea, it's like, I write only for myself. It's like, then why write? Just imagine the story and then go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? So... Story point of writing is to communicate a story to other people and you want to do it effectively and you want to make it a good reader experience and, and all that sort of stuff so um, certainly when I 
try to assemble a paperback, for instance. I want the reader experience to be really good. I want the type to be really easy to read and look good. I want the chapter headings to look good and to communicate what I want to the reader, make them feel like they're really involved in a fantastical story and, and uh, they know what to expect with each chapter. And sometimes you can give a chapter heading that's like, oh, I wonder what that's referring to and makes them want to read it. it. It's all, I mean, it's all, you're kind of marketing within your book too. Because, the, you know, each there's a bunch of steps. Get the person to pick the book up. Get them to read the description. Get them to open to the first page. And then get them to read all the way to the end. Yeah. And then leave you a review. And then leave you a review. Awesome. Like, it's a whole process. And I know that that makes it seem like super, you know, many. But, but yeah. it's, it's not that way, right? The point is to get it across. So, yeah, I I think if, if you have no chapters or if you're like, well, this chapter's... Um, 13,000 words long. It's like you might want to just split it into two chapters and see where that is. Um, for me, like the last, you know, Walk at Dusk, which you can read um, on um, dbspress.com, um, at least you can read you know, the first uh, eight chapters or so as a sample, uh, roughly for staff of the book. There's a chapter in there that's like 12,000 words, which I was like, I, I want to break it into two, but it's, it's such one big set of events I can't really I can't really break it into two and have those two chapters feel like independent ideas so I kind of right now I just kind of left it as one long chapter and I might I might come up with a break point when I you know uh, put it out when I when I actually publish the thing for real and uh, I don't know but uh, most often you, you don't want to go too long without a chapter break or your reader's going to be like man I haven't is this book going somewhere? I don't know. What, where's the chapter? Why is all, yeah, even, why am I in the same chapter? Yeah, even if you have tension release points, um, having a visual release point is also important. So yeah, kind of keeps the reader in, in music. That. In music, we you have um, harmonic resolutions, tension resolution points. We call cadences, but you can also have rhythmic cadences, and that's kind of what a what a visual. I mean, might call a visual cadence in your book is you have half the page empty you flip the page then it says next chapter yeah and um, you're like okay that's it's next kind idea. of a confirmation like all right here we go I yeah, here feel we like go next thing forward. yeah it's, I, I like that so and you know we're, we're talking about the chapter level because that's that's what your book will be composed of as many chapters so thinking about how things work on the smaller levels you would talk about having a plot point like every thousand words. You know, yeah. have something happen every thousand words that makes the reader want to keep uh, listening. And if you're you're spending more time than that getting to a plot point, you might lose some people. Yeah. And so you think like every four or five of those, that's a complete chapter. Yeah. Every four chapters, that's like an act. And there's a big going to be a big resolution that happens. Yeah. You know, and every four acts, that's the final act. You know, it's just kind of like writing Shakespeare. Every five acts, you get to the end of the play. Uh, finally, you know, Cassius and and, and uh, whoever they're defeated, and, and Octavian takes the throne. You know, and, and there's a big resolution. Um, so that's a that's a good way to think about it. And what I'd like to also, because I think people want, I think you guys might want some really specific information as to how long a book should be, like number yeah, of words. Number of words. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think <laughs> I think the average fantasy novel is like 90,000 words? I think it's 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 over 100,000. Well, you know what? Well, no, I'm talking it's average because average, there's, lots yeah. that are, there's lots that are like Way 73 long. and there's yeah. plenty that are 300. Yeah, you know? that's a good point. So, um, I, but let me start with the, what publishers expect. If you want to go through a publisher, you want to do the traditional publishing thing, it's kind of like we said, the first thing that our producer friend did was look at how many pages the script was. So yeah. if it was the right number of pages. That's the first thing an agent's going to look at, the first thing the publisher's going to look at. Um, general rule is 100,000 words. Or, or less. less. Uh, and and also, if, it's a, if it's like a high fantasy novel, you can do up to 115,000 for your first book if it's really good. And if, but it's, not a, more. if it's a series expect a hard pass if it's your first novel yes <laughs> if, it's, if you're like oh this is a, this is the first in a series the, they're not gonna that's nah, no. hard nope. pass nope we're not doing it uh, because you're you don't have a you don't have the consumer confidence yet yeah and a publisher to sign on for a series you know I know you're thinking from an author's perspective a series means 
Oh, you know, books. there's more books and therefore more money for them. It's like, but they don't know if anyone's going to buy your books. Yeah. So they want a one-off novel. It's got to be less than 100,000 words. And if it's a fantasy novel, it could be slightly more than that. But no more than like 110,000, really. 115 is like what I've been told is the max. But really, it should be hundred under 100,000. Uh, so under 100,000, if you want to do it the traditional way. Um, but probably less. Yeah. You know? Depending if you're writing a literary novel, they really don't want it to be more than about 75,000 words. Yeah. And uh, like for Immortal Fear, Immortal Fear's aiming to be about 90,000. Um, and as an urban fantasy, that's that's pretty Plenty. good. That's... All, all of Jim Butcher's books hit about 100,000. Well, the first the first couple hit about 80,000. And then after that, the... Uh, the um, the uh, uh, What's the... God, what's it? The Dresden Files. Yeah, they're about a hundred thousand words a piece, which is a good length. A hundred thousand words. Uh, you're not going to fatigue the listener and, or fatigue the reader. And the thing is, with a hundred thousand words, um, it, it's the appropriate length for the main plot plus a couple of subplots to all receive their full attention, develop some characters, and, and tie them off with a nice bow. And what's interesting about Dresden Files is, as you go on in the series. You don't need to develop Harry Dresden as much because you developed it in the first couple novels. Uh, so you get to add another subplot. Yep. You get to trade that characterization for some more subplot, which um, which is great. That's and people are already like the character, hence they're reading the yeah. sequels, and so you just get to work on the subplot, which is cool too. So um, yeah, so hundred thousand words. Um, Old Man in the Sea was like thirty thousand words. That's a novella. Yeah. So a novella is basically anything between about 20,000 words and about 45,000 words. <laughs> we call that a novella. For Stephen King, a novella is 50,000 words. <laughs> Great Gatsby yeah. was 50,000 words. To give you an idea, like some classic novels that people read. Old Man of the Sea was like 30,000. Actually, I think it was less. It's like 28,000 words. It's a, no it's a novella at best. A novelette is anything that's between like 10 and 20,000 words. So a, nove a novelette is a, usually a single plot like a novel. A couple yeah. of chapters, single plot, tension resolution, yeah. one main character usually. So my uh, my book, Cloaked in Darkness, is, is like, it's between 18 and 22,000 words. So it's, I'm not, I don't remember the exact number, but it's between novelette and novella length. <clears throat> and it, it does just that. It, it, it's a single story arc, but it sets up it sets up more story to later. happen later yeah. on. So they, so novelettes are and what's cool is like novelettes you'd never published them thirty years ago. Now you can just publish them and, and they're great, or you can have them as part of a collection and that's fine too. Um, used to be you could only ha collect them into a, a fiction collection. You used to be able to print them in in the print magazines. But that's kind of gone away, and actually they're a little bit long. Novelettes are a little bit long for, like, you know, whatever sci-fi magazine that used yeah. to exist. Um, so they were, cut, they were an awkward format, but now they have a little more, they have a little bit more ability. You, know, you can sell them for 99 cents on, on the Kindle platform or whatever. Oh, put, whatever them on, put them on uh, KDP Select. Yeah, whatever you want to do. Um, the If you're getting shorter than 10,000 words, you're in, quote, short story territory. Um, and short story territory, you're not going to have separate chapters. It's just going to be one thing. And it's got to be pretty much one idea, one character, one resolution. Adding anything more than that, you're, you're, you're not going to have enough time to develop it. You're going to find that you can't do it in under 10,000 words. Most people don't really read a lot of short fiction. And so when they write short fiction, they're not, they're not great at it or super yeah. excited about it. So keep that in mind. If you, if you read novels and you want to write novels... Writing short stories is not necessarily the best practice for that. It's not terrible practice, um, but it's kind of acquiescing to something you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you have you even have a level below that, like flash is, fiction. Yeah, which is under five thousand, which would be flash fiction. Well, under five, yeah, under five thousand could be like short story. I think flash fiction is like anything under two thousand. Yeah. Anything under two thousand is like bam, flash fiction. Yeah. <laughs> It's like it, 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 
it doesn't even fully explore an idea. It just gets you like gives you a taste. Yeah, it just it just gives you a taste of the story. A taste of this and thing I, that's interesting. You know, I've tried writing some that are really short to give. It's like you know how short can it be? I've done it in like less than five hundred words. I've written a story. Yeah. You know, that's just like a scene that explains everything that's going on, and, yeah. and you understand what the story is by the end. Um, you know, Ernest Hemingway famously was like, oh, you know, how how how. How few words can you use to write a story? And he write he wrote like um, uh, baby shoes for sale, never used. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and you see this. You actually <laughs> see this like on that. Twitter quite a bit. Is uh, two sentence stories. Yeah, like stories in 140 stories. characters. Yeah. So. so anyway, we're out of time for today. Hopefully, that gives you the, some guidelines. I know we didn't get to the the part that probably people cared about, which is the numbers. Uh, but you really have to think about the process uh, and how those numbers get related to it. So, you guys have a good day. You can find me at dvspress.com, davidvstuart.com. Uh, you can find me at matthewjwellman.com. And uh, email the show, Stu, at davidvstuart.com. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one.